need some music, man. Crime after crime intro theme. First time played live for an audience. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we had to run to Target for the speaker last night, too. Absolutely. <laughs> he was like, I need a speaker. And I was yeah. like, what kind of emergency is this? And that was it. I'm going to write this speaker off for the 15 seconds that we just used it. That's it. It was necessary. <laughs> Absolutely necessary. All right. Welcome back to Crime After Crime. I'm John Lorden. And I am Danielle Hallen. Danielle, we are finally here at CrimeCon for our big finale, and we are not here alone. Hello, everybody! Good. So you guys having a great time so far in Florida? Yeah. Yeah. Is anyone from Florida? Oh, yeah. no, with the stories we're going to tell today. <laughs> Oh my two points if you mention my hometown. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my gosh, see? Woo. I was worried that was going to happen, that there were going to be people from Florida. But luckily, I'm, I'm I still didn't kind really... of worried. Now I'm actually a little more nervous. <laughs> I don't really rag on Florida too much, though, believe it or not. Okay. Okay. So I might have the upper hand here. <laughs> I have, I might have found the inflection point for the whole Florida man, Florida woman phenomenon. You know what a data analyst I am. I have gone through, and I think I found the moment that Florida broke. <laughs> Interested in hearing this. Okay, okay. I am. We'll get to that. Uh, of course, the audience is also playing a very important role here today. Since we don't have a follow-up episode, yeah. we have to decide the winner of our Florida finale here today at the end of this episode. And who's going to do that? We are. We are. Exactly. This isn't just any old live audience. This is our final jury, and they have the t-shirts to prove it. That's right, Danielle. I spent hours and hours designing their custom t-shirts, which say, I went to Florida, and all I got was jury duty. <laughs> Candace is wearing it. You like your shirt, Candace? Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Yes, you have jury duty. <laughs> Um, let's see, everyone else love their shirts out yeah. there? Yeah. I saw that. <laughs> what? Did you just hold up an applause sign to get the audience to react? Danielle, I would never do such a thing. The truth is that they just, they love me, right guys? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, well, now I have a question. Okay. Do you guys really love John? <laughs> what? Come on. I wanted a boo sign. That's too bad. I got it. All right. Oh, well. Uh, look, we got to keep moving, and uh, we're going to move things forward with the results for our previous episode, the next to last episode, Food Heists. Now, mm -hmm. Danielle told us about a pair of Dine and Dashers, a couple that was yeah. probably talented enough to be on stage, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. But instead, they wanted to eat thousands of dollars of food for free. And I went into the story of a man who stole nearly $300,000 worth of my favorite nut. <laughs> what would that be, Danielle? The pistachio. Yep. The pistachio. <laughs> the pistachio pilferer is what I call him. How did it all play out? All right, you guys. On Twitter, I received 74% of the votes. Well, it's not Twitter anymore. It's X, but we had a weird time saying on X last time. Yeah, I was on X. So I got 74% of the votes. <laughs> it's a weird moment. And John received 26% of the votes. And then a website poll did something weird. I received only 44% of the votes. And John received 56%. Hmm. Well, that is really close. How did it play out? Well, we all know that I don't do the math at this point. <laughs> we leave but that she's up saying that like she doesn't <laughs> trust the result. <laughs> no, because I'd see that be like, well, the highest number is 74. I win, clearly. Mm. <laughs> I just let you hash it all out and then come to me and I just trust you. Yeah, that's true. If I yeah. had gotten 74% of the Twitter vote, I would just say, yeah, John wins. All right. <laughs> Hand me a He's mug. He's not joking. No, that's not true. I would go to votes. You know that. 
Now votes combined. This is definitely one of the closest yet. John wins. 51.7% to 48.3%. Woo! All right. <laughs> oh, you guys win. There's mixed emotions yeah. out there. I don't know which way to go now. Okay. Now listen, I have to give you a mug, but I want to say this. <laughs> My mugs are all broken. <laughs> what? We need to start a charity for Danielle to have an we unbroken did. mug. All my mugs are broken due to cats. <laughs> what? They are. So we have the next best mug here with us. It's probably my favorite mug. And I guess you can have it. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let me have it. Oh! <laughs> the Gucci mug has come home! The Gucci mug! <laughs> The Lucucci mug, yeah, it has subbed in on so many episodes of Crime After Crime. And it's a great mug. Yeah, it pops up in the secret studio all the time. Uh, I will proudly use this mug for the rest of the episode with my 51.7% victory, right? Yeah. <laughs> Can't tell which way you guys are going to go. I think they don't know either. I think yeah. they, some of them keep changing their minds. Okay. All right. Uh, Danielle, we have been down this road before for the season one finale. Yeah. We did Florida Man. Uh, the following year, we did Florida Woman. How can we keep going to this well of unbelievable true crime stories time and time again? How can we do it? Because of Florida's sunshine law, okay, found in the Florida statutes, the statutes establish a basic right of access to most meetings of boards. So basically all their information's out there. Florida just wants you to know the dirty on everybody. Those agencies include local law enforcement, so. That's right, and because of that, social media has been graced with amazing online article titles for many, many years now. I did a quick check of yeah. Florida Man article titles for articles written only within the past week. These oh, wow. are fresh articles. <laughs> and I've come up with some great examples, like <clears throat> Florida Man holds construction workers at gunpoint Fearing they would ruin his lawn. Wow. That's pretty intense. Um, Florida man causes $2 million in damage with hot wired excavator crashing into Walmart. So that's like pairing both of our favorites together Walmart, Florida. I love a Florida man title that has a comma in it. Oh. Because it's almost like another part of a punchline. Like yeah. Florida man causes $2 million in damage with hot wired excavator crashing crashes into, into Walmart. Walmart. <laughs> Uh, oh, what? Florida man arrested after Nazi protest in Disney World? What is, hold on a second, Florida people, what's happening out here with Disney World? A Nazi protest? Yeah, a lot of Nazis around recently. Mm -hmm. Jeez. In that city too. Casual things. Randomly. What on earth? Yeah. Street corner just, what? Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. I guess they like rides too, Danielle. Maybe they want to go on Pirates of the Caribbean. Oh, no. <laughs> Now, personally, this is my favorite. A Florida man tries to outrun police on lawnmower. If I didn't live in Minnesota. I was about to say, you know, I can, I can whip a zero turn lawnmower. I, I can't, it. I would try it. I believe it. I, I would try it. I've seen Catch some. me when I'm going in certain. <laughs> Yeah, I have seen some amazing lawnmowers in Minnesota, and I believe it. I, I believe you could try to outrun them. You're not going to get... Uh, well, you're get probably not going to get very far with your electric power push mower. <laughs> she... Personal information, Danielle. We're not supposed to be sharing personal information on the podcast, remember? Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, Florida man arrested for torching car belonging to his cousin... Wait. Who's also his girlfriend. Oh. <laughs> yeah. How about they just ended the sentence before that? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> just stop. <laughs> uh, of course, Florida woman has also been up to some hijinks as well. Like this Florida mom was arrested after she brought her son to Hotel Threesome. What? <laughs> I question many things. 
This one, Florida mom abandons child in running car to go swimming, citing that she wanted to meet sharks. <laughs> what? Last you, week. You know all about it. You're like, look, I keep up with these. <laughs> <laughs> we have some Florida experts in the audience. Uh, Florida woman arrested after biting ear off another woman during fight over vape pens and alcohol. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this one makes my stomach turn. Florida woman spiked man's drink with roach spray. I don't know how to feel about this one. Florida woman, I, I, I feel like I'm gonna one up you actually. Okay. Florida woman admits she's addicted to breastfeeding her husband. <laughs> Wow, Florida's just getting it. Yeah, you always deliver, Florida. Um, everybody, please put your hands together and give it up one last time for the last crime after crime story told by the amazing Danielle Allen. I appreciate that you held the applause sign. You do? Well, I've done more You're than that. You're me up. Um, I, you know, Danielle has been talking about how good her skin looks out here, right? Is it yeah, something true. about Florida? Yeah, the humidity, it just like makes my skin great. My hair looks crazy. Okay. I had to go and fix that, but my skin looks great. Good, good. Well, I wouldn't want you to be distracted during the reading of your script. So um, I'm gonna make sure that you oh, don't no. have, that you will look as good as possible. I'm just gonna hold this. Okay, go ahead, start reading. Okay, everybody. <laughs> I appreciate the support. Okay. If we could do that at the booth. <laughs> yeah, you want me to bring the light to the booth? Yeah, hold it that. up under your face? Okay. All right, so some people aspire to complete a 5K. John. <laughs> Others reach a little further for a marathon. And sometimes I feel like <clears throat> these goals can go hand in hand with raising awareness or you know, raising money for things like hospitals and all these beautiful reasons for us to all get together and make a difference. I mean, we're all here together, you guys flying in from all around the country, basically doing our own 5K to get to this room, by the way. Yeah. We weren't joking. I'm sure all of you were like, wow, I'm out of breath. <laughs> but you know, it's all in the name of awareness. But there was one Florida man who wanted to push the seal even further. Ray Belushi was born and raised, and I'm looking, I'm looking at the Florida people. I'm like, do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, you just threw a name out. You're gonna go, that's my cousin. I know. <laughs> Now, Ray was born and raised in Iran, and he ended up arriving to the U.S. in 2002. He had a really rough backstory, um, lived through some really traumatic experiences, and it pushed him to dedicate his life to promoting world peace, which is awesome. I'm all for that. And thanks to his physical ability, he knew a great way to do that. So he came here and started to quickly set records, both running and cycling, um, accomplishing a lot of things that a lot of people wouldn't try, or at least I definitely wouldn't try. I like this guy. Um, I know, I was about to say, he reminds me of you, except without the criminal aspect. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> um, you know, to show his appreciation for the U.S., allowing him in as a refugee, he ended up running from L.A. to Ground Zero not one time, but twice. Wow. wow. I could, I like struggle to run down my driveway to get mail. <laughs> this wouldn't be happening. <clears throat> um, he also ran the entire perimeter of the United States to raise money for Denver's Children's Hospital. I mean, he was out, he's out there just doing the absolute most. And he knew how to make an impact and took something that he loved and turned it into a way to work for a great cause. But anyone, I feel like, with determination can kind of set out for the most part and accomplish a lot of those things. And he wanted to make a much bigger point. He wanted to set records. He wanted to be seen and heard. He specifically wanted to be the first person to run 1,000 miles across the ocean. What? No, no, run. no. Run, yes. On the ocean? Yes, run. You heard me right. I don't think he can run fast enough to do that. Don't doubt Ray. <laughs> oh, okay. People have made this mistake. It didn't end well. Okay. So in 2010, hold on. Is his last name of Christ? Is his last name Christ? No. Is it Ray <laughs> Jesus Christ? <laughs> Shockingly, no. Okay. So in 2010, his plans began. He spent two years training to make sure that his body was up for this challenge. He was like running out in the desert. He's like, I got to get to like the most extremes. Um, and he was sitting down and putting together all these different prototypes of the best vessels to use. And he was doing all of this while juggling four jobs. So wow. he's just, I, he, well, he was like, I got to pay for it somehow, you know? 
And finally, this watercraft, still not sure what to call it, and I won't be by the end of this, okay. um, started to come together. Now, many of you have probably seen this in the news recently. I'm looking at you four people. Yeah, I've got a head shake over there. <laughs> the Florida Four. Yeah. <laughs> so this craft was made out of circular aluminum, like picture, I don't even know, like a Ferris wheel, essentially. And it had buoys attached to the entire thing on either sides to keep it afloat. And the inside was a clear, inflatable, three millimeter thick plastic ball. So you know the things that like they put in like the little pools that like the fair and your kids can go and run around in them. And then like the extra crazy people will throw themselves down mountains in them. Yeah, yeah. It's one of those. They're not fun <laughs> because my brain's like, you're going out of the one small hole that's in it. Like you're not gonna make it. <clears throat> And so this is how he kind of put it together. That was a ship. There's no motor, there's no seat, there's no anything covering him from the elements. It was just a man using his legs to propel himself through the water. And all I could think of was that quote where it's like, I'm just a man standing in front of a man. <laughs> but it's I'm just a man using my legs. <laughs> On the water. Running through the water. <laughs> and he was boasting to everyone that knew his plans. He's like, you know, I can get this thing up to six knots when I'm in the ocean but he had to have it registered somewhere to be able to use it. Mm. What's the only place that's probably going to <laughs> register your giant inflatable hamster wheel? That's a seaworthy vessel. Florida. It starts with an F. It ends with an F. Yeah, okay. So Florida registered this watercraft for him. And in 2014, his very first adventure began. Bellucci set off on his watercraft from Pompano Beach. Am I saying that right? Pompano. Okay, thank you. See? Wow. Instant feedback. <laughs> Pompano Beach with intentions of doing something wild. His first trip was not going to be anything small. He wasn't doing that. No, he wanted to trace the Bermuda Triangle. This journey was going to be around 3,000 miles long. It was going to be a huge task, and it did not go well for Ray. So shortly into his journey, the Coast Guard is like, wait a minute. We received a call by a boater that came across a giant man in an inflatable, inflatable bubble that was, quote, disoriented and asking for directions to Bermuda. <laughs> Could you imagine being that boater and like you're just minding your business and you're like, what the heck is that? And he's like, hey. <laughs> You think which, the guy has established? Yeah, exactly. I'm trying to buy Bermuda. I'm in a giant hamster wheel. Yeah. Now, when the Coast Guard arrived, they found Ray floating in what they actually, they kind of came up with this hamster wheel thing. They call it the hamster wheel of doom. <laughs> and he refused to be taken back to shore. He's like, I'm not going. Absolutely not. So they decided to wait it out as he was bound to need help at some point, okay? Because he had no, like, emergency support vessel. Um, his supplies looked questionable, to say the least. Oh, and so- I didn't even think about that. Yeah, exactly. Does, did he have a place to pee pee? That, no, this is what I'm saying. He did not even have a place to sit down. I mean, he could sit down in the plastic bubble. Is there like, yeah, like a little hatch he could open or something so he could no. just drop it in the ocean? Well, he could hang off of like the side of the- <laughs> 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 But that's as good as it's gonna get, okay? Okay. And so they're like, he's bound to, something's gonna happen. And sure enough, three days and about 185 miles into his trip, flips on its side. Uh, okay. He pee up, gets everywhere. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so numerous forms of support had to be deployed by the Coast Guard. They had an entire rescue ship, an A-16 helicopter. They had airplanes. I mean, they are like full on coming out to rescue this guy from the ocean. Mm. Um, it ended up being a $140,000 rescue mission. And it pissed Ray off. Pissed him off? It did. Despite his obvious exhaustion and the fact that he had to actually get water from a nearby crabbing boat, because he was only like filtering ocean water. So he like waved the crab boat down. They're like, here, we'll toss you some water. Um, he's like, nope, I'm not in distress. This is all just a misunderstanding. And so at this point, they're getting a good look over at what he has. Mm -hmm. He has protein bars, a satellite phone, and a GPS. Basics. Yeah, yeah. That's it. And the temperatures in the plastic bubble could reach up to like 120 degrees. Yeah. And so they're like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, you don't have the supplies. And so he was taken from the craft 
to go to the hospital because he was not in good shape. And they actually left his craft in the ocean, his watercraft. Mm -hmm. Did it float away? Honestly, I don't know, but I'm not too pleased about it because I love turtles and all the sea creatures. Yeah. But at this point, the captain of Port Miami was shocked and Special Agent Michael Perez determined that Ray was conducting a, quote, manifestly unsafe voyage. And so the captain of the Port Miami ordered him to never use his bubble again to get to Bermuda. Like, could you imagine having to say that out loud? (laughs) You are not to use your bubble ever again. Because he's, I mean, if you really think about it, he's not only a danger to himself. I have no idea how he was communicating with any other, like, marine anything. Yeah. Nearby. I mean, he has his cell phone, I guess. Oh, he, oh, and like or five or six flashlights. A satellite phone, I would imagine. Because he's not going to have cell towers around him. Yeah, no, so. it was like a satellite, a satellite phone. phone. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so he's obviously a danger. And Ray was like, you know what? I'm not letting this take me down. I'm not doing it. So he got a job on a local fishing boat. Maybe it was the friends that gave him water. I don't know. And he worked there for two years and saved up $22,000 to build another one. Now, hold on. I have an idea here. <laughs> He's working on a boat for years. Yes. Could he just ask them, hey, could I put a treadmill on this? Yeah. (laughs) Same difference, right? He's out in the ocean. He's getting a run. But he he has to be propelling himself. Absolutely. He wants it to be self-propelled, right? Is he trying to get into, like, Guinness Uh, World Records or something? Yes. Essentially, yeah. But the Coast Guard was like, you know what? We're still not about this journey. And so they reached out to him in 2015, and they're like, dude. (laughs) Please do not do another solo expedition. We're begging you. He keeps moving. So in 2016, they're like, we have warned you already. If you do this, we're going to throw you in prison. $40,000 is going to go in our pockets. Please do not do this without a support vessel. But Ray believed his purpose was worth the risk. He wanted to inspire people. I mean, he wasn't like doing it for bad reasons. You know, he wanted to raise money and raise awareness. And he also said, it was not an adventure if a boat was following you. And he was like, I don't want to put anybody at risk for me to like achieve my own dream and what I want to do. So those were like his reasonings. He was not going to get a support vessel. So in April of 2016, off Ray went again in his inflatable hamster wheel at Pompano Beach. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, good. For a second time. He had a lengthy list of places he wanted to visit this trip. Okay. He wanted to go to Haiti. Puerto Rico. Like, he's got a whole thing planned, right? He only made it two days before the Coast Guard found him. Well, like Just off out. the coast. No. <laughs> <laughs> Just exhausted. Off the coast of Jupiter, Florida. He still had no support boat, no supplies. He'd ignored this order. And so they were arguing with him. They're like, come on. He's like, dude, I've got a laptop. I'm fine. <laughs> yeah. I'm he on like, Facebook. I'm yeah. talking to people. He's like, I have, I have two life jackets. Mm-hmm flashlights and I can watch a movie, <laughs> we're okay. I mean, what more could you need? But this obviously didn't go over well, so he was pulled back again. And so just months later, Ray's back at it. Why don't they pull his license at some point and just say, hey, this thing, we're pulling the license on this seafaring vessel. You know, I've got lots of questions in regards to that. Florida, do we have answers for that? <laughs> no. Now, this time, Ray was like, you know what? I'm going to specifically state that I'm raising money for abused children. He's like, if I say this, you know, maybe they will, you know, it will sway their resistance a little bit. And he also tried to bypass a few issues he experienced prior by making good friends with a boater who towed him out to international water. And he's like, I've got this. He's like, at this point, I'm fine. It'll be okay. Coast Guard was like, I do not care. And so they ended up. And this is where, again, like the questionable thing comes in. They just go to do an inspection of his watercraft and they're like, whew, that fire extinguisher is not fully charged. You have to go back. (laughs) Like it has nothing to do with the fact that he's, you know, going against an order or any of the other things. They're like that fire extinguisher. And so, of course, he goes back to shore, gets a new one and is towed out twice as far in international waters. He's like, no. And he's just rolling over the waves, continuing his journey to Bermuda. But just as before, here comes the Coast Guard. They're like, I'm like, why didn't you just arrest him or something the first time? If he's doing something, you don't want him to. Um, But they're still like, nope, you're going against this. And they actually floated alongside him for three days, begging him to come back to shore. They're like, we're going to wait this guy out. He's bound to do it. He's like, no, from the inside of his bubble. 
They should have had some, like, pins or some darts while they were rolling alongside. Oh, 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 you want to come on now? Well, you may have just figured it out. Oh, really? John cracks the case. Come on. <laughs> so they are talking to him, trying to get him to come back to shore. He actually, like, pulls a knife. Like, he's, at this point, he's getting a little... A little kooky. And so they're like, you know what? We're terminating your voyage. And they popped every single one of his buoys. Okay. And they pulled him off. And at this point, because he pulled a knife and was threatening things, they took him straight to a psychiatric hospital. And this honestly makes me a little sad because it caused like an uproar in the media because he had so much like coverage before and publicity about all the great things that he had done. And now he's known as the Florida bubble man. Yeah. That was refusing to come back to shore. And the last one cost $144,000, that rescue mission. I mean, he is just. And so for the next few years, he was laying low, likely feeling very defeated, trying to figure out how he could achieve this record-breaking journey. And in 2021, he made his fourth attempt. In July of that year, he loaded up St. Augustine, Florida. He's like, you know what? I'm running for three weeks all the way to New York. And he was like, and I'm going to stick it to him because I'm going to raise money for the Coast Guard. Danielle, <laughs> is he aware that he could run to New York on land? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, you're not even going somewhere that... He's done it before. <laughs> He's done it before, but no, that's not what he wanted. And it was actually all going well. He's like, you know, no, I'm raising money for the Coast Guard. They're not possibly going to stop me. But of course, I think he took advantage. He stopped at a beach off like in the Palm Coast area, I think to show off his bubble, and immediately was swarmed by police and the Coast Guard. And they're like, dude, we have told you, you gotta stop doing this, so now you're gonna be th fined like $100,000. Wow, wow. Thinking about the amount of money that's gone into this man mm -hmm. is wild. And so he was devastated, and interestingly, he decided to pack up and head home, but it's because his GPS and his charging cables went missing. <laughs> And I'm like, did the Coast Guard just take it? They're like, we are so tired of arguing with him. And from there, everything seemed quiet until literally last month. <clears throat> last month, he was back at it. No. Now, listen, August is, was a very busy month in terms of hurricane season, okay? Yeah. Adalia ripped through Florida, up the East Coast, okay? I thought I was absolutely going to be blown away on the coast of North Carolina. And that was just like a tropical storm. The house, I was like, this house is going to be picked up. <laughs> and during this, the National Hurricane Center had their eye on another hurricane, Hurricane Franklin. And they're like, you know what? This setup can mean a devastating double whammy, like coming from both directions. It was a very scary situation. And so with Franklin increasing in power, they're like, this could be a level four storm. You know, we need to go and start preparations. And so the Coast Guard on August 26th is like, we're going to go out. We're going to, you know, make sure local boaters know everything that's going on, that they need to stay safe, you know, all the imminent danger. And so they are like in action, right? And they're floating along. And then they're like, wait, <clears throat> What is that? <laughs> <laughs> 70 miles off the coast of Tybee Island in Georgia. They inch closer and closer and see the strange floating sphere. It's Ray Bellucci and his giant hamster wheel. And he wasn't headed to New York or Bermuda, which by the way, he was not successfully able to do either of those. I was just gonna ask, like he's not completing any of these trips, but his goals keep, mm, mm, mm. Oh yeah, you wanna know where he was going this time? London. <laughs> of course. He's like, well clearly, I can do this. <laughs> he says, nope, I am going to London all alone. Oi, is that a man in a bubble? <laughs> <laughs> so the Coast Guard's like, okay, we've had enough. This is not up to standards. You don't have a support vessel. And uh, by the way, there's two hurricanes coming this way. Like, you need to get out of the water. People in boats aren't going to be safe. Like, you're not going to be safe in this giant inflatable thing. I don't even know what to call it. And at this point, Ray had, had enough. He's like, y'all are dream crushers. You're ruining it all. And so he pulled a knife again. And then he pulled a second knife. 
And so the Coast Guard's like, all right, we waited him out before we're going to do it again. So they call in a second boat. The second boat comes. And he's like, you know what I have? On this clear inflatable raft, a bomb somewhere. Oh. <laughs> I don't know where he thought he was hiding this bomb because it literally, I mean, it's clear plastic. You can see right through it. And so at this point, this man that has already racked up hundreds of thousands of dollars in rescues is bringing the U.S. Navy explosive unit in. They arrived on scene. They're literally trying to determine the blast radius oh my God. of this bomb. And Did he mean that he was just going <laughs> to pop the bubble? <laughs> <laughs> and they're out there trying to prepare for whatever damage might come. And keep in mind that, you know, this is on a massive time crunch in the middle of the ocean on the edge of a hurricane. And they're like, this crazy man in a bubble is going to blow us all up. Like, this is going to be the end. But Ray ultimately ended up admitting... I actually am not hiding a bomb in this clear giant bubble. No way, Ray. Of course not. Yeah. And what's funny is that the um, U.S. Coast Guard said that they believed him because he held up wires. <laughs> so at this point, I have a lot of questions for the U.S. Coast Guard. <laughs> Needless to say. And after five days of spinning out in the ocean, and I mean these two big U.S. or Coast Guard ships are just like floating around him just staring at him, waiting for him to do something. He finally gave in and was brought to shore. And despite his intentions of raising money, you know, he still broke the law. He knew he was breaking the law. He'd been told this numerous times. And so he ended up being charged with obstruction of boarding and violating a captain of the port order. And Ray was held on $250,000 bond. Now, somehow he did manage to make this bond and he was released. However, the conditions were that he not travel to Southern Florida and he's not allowed to go near the ocean at all. <laughs> like he can't even approach the coastline. <laughs> or obviously board any vessel of any kind. And they had to like specifically put of any kind because he will, you know, like the inflatable rafts you can buy it like wings and like all those other stores. Right. He would probably try one of those. <laughs> now his attorney has not responded to any requests for comments lately and I feel like we should see Ray in court sometime in the near future. Now, as far as the hamster wheel, it actually was last seen along North Carolina's coast. I don't know why they took it there. It's literally just hooked to the dock like a boat. <laughs> Are they trying to hide it from Ray? <laughs> Probably. But I mean, it's perfectly intact. So I feel like there's a chance that Ray will be at this again. I just want to know when he's going to decide, I want to run to the moon. <laughs> it might happen, honestly. Yeah. A huge thank you to News Journal Online, NBC News, PNR.org, Wikipedia, and The Guardian. Mm. I feel bad for him, in a way. I, you know, there's, I like, I mean, I, I'm a runner. Like, I get wanting to take on new challenges and, you know, to be known for doing something in that space, I think is a dream for a lot of people. Yeah. I totally understand all that. What I don't is... Even people that do things like the swim from Alcatraz, you know, there's certain people that yeah. will do like the escape from Alcatraz swim. They have safety vessels with them exactly. when they're doing that. You yep. know, there's shark issues, there's temperature issues, there's all these reasons. I don't know why he made this determination that, well, it's not it really an adventure. It would mean less. Yeah, yeah, like it would mean less if he were not to have help. It wouldn't. It, I mean, it's... he's willing to, I mean, he's ready to take on the whole Coast Guard numerous times. Yeah. Yeah, but um, and I also wonder just about the isolation aspect. <clears throat> yeah, you know, um, there's been a lot of studies about like astronauts traveling to Mars. And yeah, could they make it? Like there, there's literally tests where they've taken people and they have them living in a confined space for that much mm -hmm. time, and the social dynamics break down. Like people go crazy. Like violence yeah, exactly. starts to pop up, and for a person that's on their own out there. Um, exhausting themselves in that way. I mean, you, you can't do any race in this country that doesn't have safety personnel there. So I, it's a weird expectation for me yeah. that he's just like, I want to do it, but no, no one else. Well, I know and all the money that's kind of been thrown into this. I'm like, if this was thrown into having a team. Yeah. Yeah, he would have had this done already. Yeah, it would and have it, been done like a long time ago. And like at least hit one ago. of his goals. Yeah. Which is another aspect of this that I find troubling is the whole like you got to crawl before you can walk yeah and it just it seems like he's not completing any of these things but okay next time i'm going for this next time i'm going for that yeah. he seems like a he's got that personality type where he's like bigger better bigger yeah better pretty faster, much you know? pretty much
Wow, wow, poor Ray. Well, uh, everyone, did you think that Danielle did a good job? <laughs> Her last crime after crime story. I you did a good job too. Oh, thanks, John. Um, but was it good enough? Well, with the way that you have been emailing me and intimidating me the past couple of days, probably not. <laughs> it's my guess. Um, well, I'll, I will answer one question before we cut to the commercial break. I, okay. you know, off the top of this episode, I wasn't sure if we were going to be telling Florida man, Florida woman, yeah. maybe one of each. It seems like Florida man has the crown for yeah. these stories because this has officially turned into a Florida man episode. But what could beat one Florida man? We'll find out. Multiple Florida men. Don't answer it now. <laughs> it's supposed to be the cliffhanger. How are we going to get them to sit through and listen to the HelloFresh ad now? <laughs> we'll see what happens on the other side of this commercial break. There is no way that we could do the Florida finale without our biggest show sponsor. You know them, you love them. It's HelloFresh! Now, HelloFresh does all of the shopping and meal planning for you. Ingredients arrive at your doorstep, pre-portioned and ready to cook, along with pictured step-by-step -step recipe cards. How easy is that? It's not just easy, Danielle. Those recipe cards, took me from being completely terrified in the kitchen True. to mastering that domain. And Lord and Ramsey. <laughs> becoming Lord and Ramsey. <laughs> I, I have to ask, did you try the spicy nuts? They were delicious. Uh-huh, okay, excellent. Well, they wouldn't exist without the cooking and flavoring skills that I learned directly from HelloFresh. I've learned so much about cooking thanks to them. HelloFresh is cheaper than grocery shopping and 25% less expensive than takeout. Okay, I'll take that. That means less stress in your day and more money back in your pocket. Now, last week we had an option from their new vegan offerings. Ooh. It was Ooh. vegan mushroom and soy ramen. And seriously, I'm, I'm not joking I at all. I love ramen and I love mushrooms. Best ramen I've ever had in my life. Uh, both my wife and I were completely flipping out over the flavor and how easy it was to pull together. I've, to, I've been telling all of you for yeah, years, years to try HelloFresh. You will absolutely love it. Uh, it's amazing when you have a meal and you're like, Whoa. that's better than the restaurant. <laughs> Hold on a minute. Came out of my kitchen. Go to HelloFresh.com slash 50 crime after crime and use code 50 crime after crime for 50% off plus free shipping. Why are you denying yourself an amazing meal? You guys, why? <laughs> Go to HelloFresh.com slash 50 crime after crime and use code 50 crime after crime for 50% off plus free shipping right now. They're America's number one meal kit for a reason. And both John and I want to say a huge thank you to HelloFresh for supporting our show all of these years. Yeah, what do you guys think? How about it for HelloFresh? <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> Are you guys ready to see what John cooked up today? What? Wow, this is a tough crowd on me too. <laughs> Don't know how this is happening. As much as we say boo, we're gonna let him talk anyway. So let's hear John's final crime after crime story. All right, now look. You got me nervous. I knew Danielle was gonna come into this last episode <laughs> Rolling strong, so I thought, and what's... And an inflatable hamster wheel. Seriously, across Rolling. the ocean. Uh, I thought, what's the only thing that could beat one Florida man? How about several? You called it. I knew it. Florida men. I knew it. Now, I love sandwiches. I literally have one every day for lunch. My own Lord and Ramsey personal special. Uh, but for some reason, I've never tried a Jimmy John's gourmet sandwich. Are they any good? What? I've never tried that with the kick and ranch. It's delicious. What do you guys think, Jimmy John's? Yeah, it's huh? good. I like I it. I don't know. I see a couple of people like, yeah, it's all right. <laughs> okay. They're probably Jersey Mike's fans. Mm. Uh, well, let's see here. Uh, it's 2007. Three guys go into a Jimmy John's in Gainesville. How about it for Gainesville? Good. We got no Gainesville people here. Good. Good. I'm much more comfortable now. Yeah. That was a test, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. You're like, how far can I take this yeah, story exactly. today? Um, 
So yeah, stop and process that sentence for a second. Uh, first of all, nothing good happens in any fast food location after 2 a.m. We no, know that through years of research. Uh, second, we're talking about a city in, what state was that again? Anyone? Anyone? Florida. Florida. So these guys order their food. The clerk starts making their order and handing them the items. But then an argument breaks out between them and the sandwich clerk, Danielle. Ooh. Must have not put enough sauce. An exchange so heated that the three men decide to use force. Now, what could this argument be over? Politics, religion, vaccines. Apparently, the men wanted a $1 bag of chips, but they didn't want to pay for them. Hmm. Seems logical. Yeah. Is that something you can do, Daniel? Can you go into a store and say, like, I want this, but I don't want to pay? <laughs> we can try. <laughs> it's not going to go well. We should have tried a Target last night if we were going to try that. I keep waiting to hear, podcasters uh, arrested at CrimeCon. Which, by the way, if that Judge Judy robe goes missing, that it was, was not no, me. It was not John. <laughs> no. And then the police went near it, not Danielle. Yeah. Danielle's got a thing for that police costume. Because she loves a mannequin in uniform. <laughs> Uh, so these guys think that they can order these bag of chips, get them for free. They can't, even though these guys have college educations. The clerk refuses, mm -hmm. and the violence rapidly escalates. The three men grabbed whatever weapons they could. Was it a pair of tongs? <laughs> Thankfully, no. There were no hot dog tongs. There were no wasabi pants anywhere nearby. But there was empty soft drink cups oh. and a fresh gourmet jimmy john's sandwich listen how are you going to get your sandwich and want your chips for free and then use your sandwich as a weapon that's all you have left this is florida <laughs> that's all you have left as one online publication would title their article it was a case of assault with a delicious weapon <laughs> the three men brutally <laughs> for a delicious weapon. <laughs> the three men brutally attacked the clerk, hurling the devastatingly tasty sandwich at him, followed by an onslaught of empty cups. It's amazing the building is still standing. Again. Well, honestly, have you, has anyone ever had stale Jimmy John's bread? <laughs> oh, that now we're getting hard, the truth about okay? Jimmy John's right now. No, well, that's just sometimes. <laughs> it's only sometimes, but if it's stale, it's a weapon. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the men leave. Now, I'm initially assuming that the clerk's body was transported to the morgue, but it seems that somehow he survived. Uh, and he called the police. About 30 minutes later, the cops roll up on these three guys and they try to stop them. One of these guys bolts, and I mean like disappears, bolts, uh, faster than the flash, like disappearing from the movie theaters. I mean, he's gone before the cops even know what's happened. And it turns out there's a good reason for that He's a track star. Xavier <laughs> Carter is currently the 11th fastest sprinter in the world at the 200 meters. He can do it in 19.3 seconds. 200 meters. Okay, so my question is, why didn't he just take the chips and run? He could have. You wouldn't have seen him. <laughs> chips are gone. Uh, yeah, uh, the two guys that he's with, one is a former football player for the University of Florida Gators. Wow. And the other is a current player for the Gators. And oh, no. He's named Jermaine Cunningham. Now, Cunningham is what some criminalists would refer to as the empty cup throwing man. Okay. <laughs> Gets a bit technical, so I'm just trying to keep you on board here. Uh, those two were arrested that night, and they found the track star about a half hour later now three states away <laughs> no he was running to london he didn't man they'd be a team <laughs> yeah they would be the track star was charged with resisting arrest while the other two got misdemeanor battery charges but there was another factor at play here danielle jermaine cunningham played as defensive mm -hmm. end for the gators he was tied for that year for the most sacks on his team and the final and biggest game of the season was coming up the Capital One Bowl was scheduled to be played in Orlando. Oh, boy. And on New Year's Day, and it was against Michigan. Would the Gators coach, Urban Meyer, bench Cunningham for assaulting a sandwich clerk with empty drinking cups? No, this is football. Oh. <laughs> so my guess is going to be no. <laughs> oh. 
Here's a quote directly from the head coach. I've heard Jermaine's story. His story bordered on being ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> Not very smart. Nope. And there was some disrespect involved. So, Just some? <laughs> some. So we handled it internally. He'll play in the game, but he's still paying a price as we speak. Every morning, he's involved in things. Things. <laughs> End of quote. <laughs> wow. I feel so settled now. Involved in things. Uh, yeah, Jermaine played. <laughs> And uh, he was playing with a little-known quarterback named Tim Tebow on his team. Oh, man. But the Gators lost to, uh, to Michigan. So well, karma there. Yeah. Now, I know many of you are probably wondering about one of the most important details about the attack. So I have a direct quote from a news source to answer that. Quote, the report did not specify exactly what kind of sandwich struck the victim. <laughs> Which, I mean, is important because salami is, like, thick. <laughs> Well, and if the bread's stale, I mean, it's back up. <laughs> it's a full on. And wow. listen, mustard? Mm. Uh, yeah. Close enough to wasabi. Being a true crime analyst, I took one look at the menu and I could tell you immediately what sandwich it was. Do you, oh, okay. Do you know what the number eight is? No, I don't actually. The Billy Club. <laughs> <laughs> Roast beef, ham, provolone, Dijon, lettuce, tomato, mayo. The sandwich was used by former Gators linebacker Jonathan Demps in the attack. What happened with the charges for all these athletes, Danielle? Well, the state attorney's office dropped the charge against the track star, which honestly I don't get because of all these charges. Like, he resisted arrest. He legitimately <laughs> immediately ran from the scene of a crime. Yeah. Uh, but if I'm learning anything from this story, it's the point you made earlier. If you're a star athlete, seems like you might get special treatment. Uh, but get, not free chips. <laughs> no free chips. No free chips. Get this. As part of his deal for them to drop the charge, he agreed to make a $100 donation to a nonprofit children's dance workshop. A donation that he had actually yeah. already made previously. <laughs> so he's like, hey, remember? No, I got a receipt for it. It's You've from, already done this. It's fine. Yeah, it's from three years ago. Yeah, that'll work. Okay. Uh, yeah. The prosecutors also dropped charges against Jermaine Cunningham, saying that the police report was inconsistent with his story. <laughs> Does, doesn't that happen in every single case that goes into a courtroom? The police report was inconsistent Imagine with that. the defendant's story. Wow. Imagine that. But there's another twist. Jermaine's version of the story was now being backed up by the clerk. What? Yeah. Now, I don't have specific details, but I can only imagine that Jermaine said to the clerk, sorry, I threw an empty cup at you. And the clerk said, I, <laughs> I wasn't hospitalized over the empty cup, Jermaine. Mm -hmm. It was that vicious sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> I'll never walk again because of Jonathan Demps. Yep. Now, the state prosecutor said that he wanted to resolve the issue with Demps outside of the court system. And it seems they did because Demps basically disappears from both his football career and the internet completely. Ooh. But this whole incident got me thinking, Danielle. It got me thinking real hard about Florida, which is dangerous. Don't try it. <laughs> and it got me wondering if we aren't holding people responsible for their criminal actions. Yeah. Isn't that actually encouraging those actions a bit more? Yeah. Why would that happen? It's almost as if it's by design. If you think of Florida crime as a wheel with all these different spokes, was there a center to that wheel? I scoured the databases, and I think I've found the center of all Florida crime. And in doing so, I may be able to stop Florida man once and for all. I'm all ears. It's happening at a school, everybody. I can even tell you the specific name of the program. As a matter of fact, you've already heard it in today's story. Mm -hmm. It's the University of Florida, specifically the Gators football team under criminal mastermind coach Urban Myers. <laughs> now, Myers started with the University of Florida in 2005, and he'd become a bit of a controversial uh, figure. While he brought an impressive winning percentage, two national championship victories, and even a Heisman Trophy, he was also bringing another interesting stat to the team. Things. How many players are being arrested? Hmm. 
Uh -oh. Publications would say that Myers had a failure to discipline and a failure to mentor his players. And if you could block, tackle, or run, any disobedience was just pushed to the side. So yeah, to your point, I guess every morning he's involved in things. <laughs> isn't a strong things enough. Things may be a little nefarious at times. But yeah, geez, make some of those things at least somewhat uncomfortable. Oh my goodness gracious. Uh, the Matador Sports notes several crimes with seemingly no punishment. Jarvis Moss only missed one game in 2007 despite repeated failed drug tests. Uh, Marquise Hanna was charged with felony burglary punishment to be determined. Carl Johnson was charged with misdemeanor violation of a sexual restraining order originating from date rape allegations. Never missed a game. Janoris Jenkins resisted arrest and had to be subdued by taser. No significant punishment. Jamar Hornsby, get this one. Oh no. Accused of ringing up 70 fraudulent charges in 2008 on a credit card that belonged to a female student, comma, one that had died in a motorcycle crash. Oh That's cool. Wow. The Matador Sports summed it up well, saying that Myers is sending the message that playing at the University of Florida is akin to having a get out of jail free card. That's what it seems like. No accountability for your actions as long as you perform mm -hmm. on the field and bring home wins. Uh, an expose by the Sporting News would confirm this. It was titled, How Urban Meyer Broke Florida Football. It, it noted a circle of trust that supposedly was developed in this organization. It only included star players and they received favorable treatment, including hiding the fact if they had positive drug tests from the public. E. But he denies all this. Of course, naturally. Now, I believe that that coach had already done the damage and he planted the seeds because in 2013, the same year that the Florida Man meme began, Ooh. the New York Times released another article looking at the Florida Gators and Checking out that different stat about their players, 31 player arrests between 2005 to 2010. More than six arrests per season. The Times notes that more serious charges included aggravated stalking, domestic violence by strangulation, aggravated assault, and burglary. Most of those cases never go to trial. 31 arrests out of 121 players in total over all those years. But if you track those players further into their lives, that number goes up to 41 arrests with a few notable examples, like a man named Aaron Hernandez. Oh boy. <laughs> oh, he was man. actually a suspect in the Gainesville shooting while he was playing for the Gators. Yeah. And of course, most true crime fans know that he would go on to be found guilty of first degree murder. Uh, then there was Tony Joyner, who was captain of the 2006 Gators team. Uh, back at that time, he broke into a car impound lot to get his girlfriend's car out without paying for it. These guys, and they, they just don't want to pay for things, no, apparently. No, absolutely not. Um, years later, found guilty of murdering his girlfriend and sentenced to 25 years. That actually just happened back in June. Uh, and he was actually caught in thanks, uh, in part, to the amazing show Cold Justice. Oh, awesome. Your friend, oh. yeah. So what does Urban Mayors say about this trend? Quote, relating or blaming these serious charges to the University of Florida, myself or our staff, is wrong and irresponsible. And I will make you do things. <laughs> <laughs> is it though? <laughs> He retired after leaving the Gators, but it was only temporary. He'd soon become the head coach at Ohio State. He took the Buckeyes to a national championship. You know what that means? Everybody, get ready for Ohio, man. I know. That's coming. Yeah, a couple years. I think you're on to something. His career kept going. He finally got called up to the NFL. Oh, boy. In 2021, he was hired to be the head coach for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Hmm, okay. Jacksonville. What state is that in again? <laughs> Florida, as his first season was about to start, a video would come out. <gasps> Shocked. <laughs> is that Coach Meyer? Is he getting frisky with a woman at a bar? Oh wait, that's not his wife. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Jacksonville would win their first few games, but things were shaking loose quickly. Uh, Jaguars kicker Josh Lambeau publicly accused Meyer of physical abuse. Ooh. He's saying his coach kicked his leg during warm-ups. 
Well, go and kick him. <laughs> Take that. Do something. Yeah. The, the owner decided to fire him, and now Coach Meyer has a new record. He's the fourth shortest coaching career in the NFL. <laughs> with a miserable two wins and 11 losses. As for Jermaine Cunningham, the Jimmy John's cup thrower, would he stay out of Florida Man headlines, Danielle? What do you think? I'm not convinced of it, no. Mm, not exactly. In 2014, after playing in the NFL for the New York Jets, police arrived at his home in New Jersey. Apparently, he was posting sexually explicit pictures of his ex-girlfriend on Instagram without her permission. And she oh. reported him. He was busted for revenge porn, and once again proving you can take the man out of Florida, but you can't take the Florida out of the man. That's right the now. truth. It when is. cops processed his home, they also found a firearm which was registered to him, but apparently he had violated state gun transportation laws by taking it out of Georgia. He also had hollow point bullets. Now apparently hollow points are legal in every state, except for one, New Jersey. Yeah. Where he was living. So uh, he made a plea deal to keep him out of prison. Uh, he pled guilty to single counts of third degree invasion of privacy, fourth degree illegal transport, transport of a weapon, fourth degree possession of hollow point bullets. He was facing three years just on the gun charges alone yeah, and possibly imagine. five on the revenge porn, which thank you. I'm happy that we have some yeah, laws really. that are protecting people in that situation. Uh, so after researching today's story, everyone, I have decided to start a change.org petition. I want no. to <laughs> rename the University of Florida to Florida University so that anyone going there will think twice about it, asking themselves, do I really want to tell my parent I'm going to F you? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. New York Times, Orlando Sentinel, Gainesville Gazette, KIRO7 News, People.com, ESPN, The Matador Sports, Everyday Should Be Saturday.com. Cool name for a website, isn't it? Yeah, it's it? pretty cool. Courthousenews.com, Bentley Historical Library, Chat Sports and Wikipedia for information contributing to today's story. Um, also, if anyone out there is thinking, well, I guess FU isn't the place to send my kid. <laughs> what about Florida State? They actually have the second highest number of athletes named in cri criminal allegations. They've got 66 men's basketball and football athletes. And in 70% of those incidents, what happens, Danielle? Nothing is done. No charges. They just have to do things after. No <laughs> charges. Also, just because I don't want to dump on Florida, and I am honest with the data when I find it, how about for the NFL? Who do you think is the team with the most arrests? Oh, I've got no idea. I wouldn't even know where to All right. begin I'll on that. I'll take you through a, a very quick okay. top five. Okay. In spot number five, Cleveland Browns, Kansas City Chiefs, Cincinnati yeah. Bengals, Denver Broncos, and in first place, where are we at, Minnesota? <laughs> Minnesota Vikings, 55 registered offenses in the last 23 years. Don't you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, best behaved team? Yeah, I'm ready Houston, for it. Houston Texans. They've, oh. they've only had 16 player arrests. So, um, yeah. If you're curious about the most troublesome position, that sounded risque. Yeah, uh, just a little bit. Wide receiver is the most arrested position in football with an incredible 158 players apprehended for various crimes since 2000, including 10 in the last two years alone. How random is that? <laughs> the wide receiver, Danielle. It's always the wide receiver. He's a criminal. He's a criminal, I tell you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well. Um, all right. So everybody, this is where we would usually tell our extra stories. But Danielle, this is the last episode. Yeah. And after those two unforgettable, amazing, am I right? <laughs> we kind of <laughs> we, we can't leave everyone on a cliffhanger like this. Exactly. We need to determine the winner of the Crime After Crime finale series. That's right. Now, our jury foreman is the amazing Christy Arnhart. Christy? <laughs> you were sworn in, correct? Okay. Thank you for your service, Christy. Uh, we have stopped at no expense to make sure that your votes are counted and 
accurate. We are in Florida after all. Yes. <laughs> yes, that was a joke from like the 2000 election. <laughs> Some of you weren't born yet. <laughs> so I designed an app just for you guys to do this vote. So everybody, please take out your cell phones. Wow, John, you really went all out. What? You're surprised, Danielle? <laughs> Literally, no. <laughs> Come on. Okay. Ready? Everyone is um, okay. Uh, so if you think Danielle told the best story, please hold up your cell phone. Sophisticated. <laughs> Sophisticated. Thank you. Let's get the the form and get a count there. Okay. All right. And if you think John told a better story, please hold up your cell phone in the sophisticated voting process. Okay, hold on. This is gonna take a minute. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Close. I don't know how this is gonna go. But you know what? I'm sure that you could find a way to somehow tally this and make you the winner. Well, wait, I gotta get the web votes worked yeah. into this, right? Absolutely. Uh, jury four person, what happened? Well, after I've calculated all of the votes, today's winner looks like Danielle. Danielle! Yeah. See, I told you, they don't want crime to stop in Florida. I found the start of it. We can shut it down today. They like it. They do. <laughs> they do. I'm no, trying to finish this good. because I need to hand it back to you, I guess. I know. He's like, hold on a minute. Look, look, look. Okay. Thank you. There you go. Yeah, Danielle you. gets the mark back. Thank you, guys. All um, right. Oh, well, I can proudly display it. This is my favorite blog, and it's the first time I've even touched it in person. <laughs> That's true. I love this thing. I think it's so great. That's, uh, well, that's, that's, that's the it. show. Ah! That's the show, Danielle. Um, I know. I just wanted to take a moment and thank everyone for being yes, here. Yes, thank you so much. But I did also want to just take a moment and thank Danielle oh. for being so committed to this project all these years. Yeah. Um, I really cherish the time that we get to spend together mm -hmm. making those episodes. I'm very proud of the work that we did together Me on too. that. Me too, hands um, down. And thank you so much for all the smiles and all the support over the years. Why is he always here to make me cry? <laughs> he like knows. He's like, how can I get to her today? <laughs> no, really, it's been such a great time, and I really want to thank all of you guys for being here. I feel like we couldn't have. I'm gonna start crying. I can't do it. No, you can't say that because it'll cry. <laughs> no, but it's it's so cool seeing it come to life and live like it did. <laughs> yeah, it was a real special thing. Thank you guys so much for all being a part of it. We really appreciate you guys. Thank you for having us. Mm -hmm. Now, <clears throat> Crime After Crime has been produced and hosted by definitely not Daniel Howland, who's crying, <laughs> <laughs> and the amazing John Lorden. And we wouldn't have made it five years if it wasn't for you. Yes. So we do yes. have one final gift for everyone at home. We actually have another gift for all you. We'll get to that. But for everyone at home, right after this episode, open up Google and do a search on Florida Man and then add the month and day of your birthday. Yeah. And check out those articles. See what the Florida Man gives the world on your birthday. <laughs> Uh, I also wanted to say thank you so much for taking this ride with us. And uh, something tells me there is a pretty good chance that you'll see us again. What do you think? I think there's a pretty good chance. I think so. I think so. Mm -hmm. And I also, as always, want to thank our supporters on Patreon. You guys, they have had so much fun with us. They know me way too well at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Are any of you guys patrons? Whew, y'all missed out. <laughs> That was our time where we got to speak about all the crazy things happening in my life, my farm updates. Mm -hmm. We got to know each other very well, put John on the spot, and then he'd make sure to put me on the spot next time. Oh, and so, I'd show embarrassing pictures of my cosplay. I know. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it was a mess, but... I mean, uh, awesome pictures of my cosplay. Did I say embarrassing? 
And I just went with it, too. <laughs> John, <laughs> robot costume's really cool. <laughs> but as you guys can remember, you can still find both of us all over the place, including YouTube, the Mysteria channel on Roku, and, of course, on Facebook and TikTok, just all the places. Yep, absolutely. This is Crime After Crime signing off. Thank you guys so much for being here. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.